is London. I've been sober for four years. The drugs I was into were everything. How it started was I started drinking at three. I grew up in a household which was partying, sex, drugs. My father gave me my first drink. From there, I just went into harder drugs like heroin, spice, PCP, meth, molly, ecstasy, LSD, cough syrup. Anything I can get my hands on, I would, I would use it. I dealt with a lot of abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse. Most of my family members are drug addicts and criminals. I had my mother. I had my father in and out, but every time he came, he was abusive. He beat my mom, beat me, molested my older sister. She's 19. I have a younger sister. She's 15. And then I have a younger brother. He's 13. Um, he's my half-brother. My uh, dad had an affair. She was 16 years old, got her pregnant, and that's why I have another uh, brother. Most of my family members are unhealthy, but there are some healthy ones. My grandpa is in the program. He's been in the program for 10 or 11 years. He's 10 or 11 years old. The person I'm closest to would probably be my older sister or my, my youngest cousin. Just growing up, me and my, uh, my older sister, we were uh, bonded by our trauma, so we would talk about it all the time hang out, do different things. My younger cousin, I grew up with him. Um, he dealt with a lot of trauma I did, and he's dealing with it now. So I feel like that uh, that bonded us. I'm kind of like a big brother to him. Uh, it's great. She's out in North Carolina right now with her husband because she got, she got pregnant at 18 years old. So she has a kid, and she's out with her husband, and he's in the Air Force. She kind of got out of all the chaos. My mother is an army, but she has a lot of mental much uh, health uh, problems and um, our relationship is good because I still live with her. I just accept her for who she is. Sometimes it doesn't feel like she's ever loved me. She has a, I mean, with my dad and her, the only thing that's, that's different is she never left us kids and she took care of us with clothes, food, but sometimes we didn't have food at the house. We would be sleeping on people's couches, different things like that. My mother is bipolar, so she has ups and ups and downs. It could be like a, a, a second and um, she could snap. She'll be happy for one second and then she'll just snap randomly. Uh, the first time I ever got messed up was when I was seven, after I was molested by a family member. It, it just felt like something I was going to do the rest of my life. It uh, numbed my pain and I felt, I felt just, it, it just felt amazing to me the first time I ever got drunk. So the, the first time I ever realized that my family was different from others was in like uh, middle school when I started hanging out with my other friends, going to their households. Seeing that their family was not young at each other, you see more hugs. They would, they would just talk to each other politely. When I would go to these kids' houses and spend the night, I never wanted to leave. That's just how it was for me, because every time I left, I just walked back into the chaos. I was using, I was going to trap houses, I was sleeping on floors, I was running away. I was detained for, I, I had run-ins with the cops, all types of different things, so alcohol poisoning, suspended from school. I was doing bad stuff, but I didn't really care. I basically killed myself. Um, so I took, took the, the pills I was just talking about. Um, I took more than I usually did. I uh, passed out. Well, not passed out. I basically died. My heart stopped. And I don't, I don't really know how to explain it, but like the meth kicked my heart back into gear. And I woke up and it was like, <gasps> like gasping for air. Um, and then I popped more and I did more. And then I was hallucinating, running from people. And then my mom called the police. They came and the ambulance came too. And they checked my heart rate. It was 190. They told me my heart looked like it was about to explode. And when I got to the hospital, they told me that if I didn't get there in time, I would be dead. So why I changed my life from that experience was I didn't have anything right for me, you know? I was, uh, I was in a gang, I was selling drugs, I was committing crimes, um, I was ditching school, I had nothing right for me. I, I was doing bad shit with my family members, I couldn't see any of them, 
I was kicked out of my house and different different things like like that. I just thought to myself, I didn't have a legacy. I didn't have anything right for me. If I would have died that day, then that's what my legacy would be. Would be just people would forget about me or think about how awful I was. I just didn't want to lose my life and be looked at like that. How I got into APG was um, my grandfather's in the program. So there was, there was another younger person that went to this school called Mission High School, which at the time APG was on the campus of Mission High School. So I got into Mission High School, just went to APG every day after that. So what I was gonna do was I was gonna sell drugs again and, and do this and do that. And I, my, my thought process was, oh, I'm gonna stay sober or I'm gonna just smoke weed. That's, that's, that's my whole th thought process, right? So what hit me was, first off, the person didn't want to sell me a pistol because they thought I was going to hurt them probably. And I felt like that was a sign from, from God, my higher power. Um, I, don't, I don't know what happened. It was just like, I didn't want, I didn't want to sell drugs or, or buy a pistol anymore. And I just bought a, a jewel. <laughs> a juice. Hey, wrong, I just bought a juice starter kit. Let me just try this out because, you know, I've done this. Like, I could sell drugs. If this doesn't work out, I can go back to using. If this doesn't work out, they just show me love at, at the school that I've never felt. And, like, they hugged me and they, like, I went to meetings before that, but I was, uh, I had a little bit of hope and uh, I went to Mission High School. And like they just showed me love I've never I've never felt before. They uh they show me that I meant something, you know. When when everybody else was, I felt like never really thought I meant something to them, or would would say I couldn't accomplish something or do this or do that. I knew everybody was like he's just gonna relapse again and go back to the way he was. So what drew me to continue coming back was they had this dirt practice meeting coming in. But not only that, uh, this woman named Rachel, she was she was working here too, and she she was running it. I remember this this meeting comes in. It's called Dirtbags. I'm like, what is this? This man Keegan and uh, Tyler came in here with monitors on, and they were like, I'm Keegan and I'm a fucking dirtbag. And then and then just just hearing these two different people's stories was amazing. Like I heard Tyler's story. Um, I heard Keegan's story. I I, I heard uh, Rachel Rachel's story, and uh, I was just moved by it. And like these people were younger, and it was just like insane. I just liked their energy and and who they were. Yeah, I could connect, and and I, I realized that day like sobriety is cool. Like there's there's cool ass people in sobriety.